Hey guys, uh, welcome to the video lecture series on K nearest neighbors. Before starting, I, I would like to tell you something about this algorithm. Alongside decision trees, uh, this is one of those algorithms which is very very easy to understand as well as to explain and it's very very intuitive. That's why I have chosen this algorithm to be the first algorithm that we'll learn in machine learning. In fact, initially I was planning to make only one video on this topic, but gradually as I got into the topic, I thought why not make an entire playlist. Okay. So let me show you what are the different topics that we're going to cover in this series. We'll first get an introduction about the topic as well as the geometric intuition behind it. Then we'll work on a real world data set and we'll apply the KNN classifier on that data set. Then we'll build a KNN classifier from scratch as we have decided. Uh, we are going to make uh, algorithms from scratch in this course. Fourth, we'll also try to build and deploy the ML model onto the cloud, most likely on Heroku. And eventually we'll discuss some advanced topics related to KNN. So that's the plan guys. Okay. Now let's start with this video. Uh, before starting, we are going to take some assumptions which are very much required. So here's the first assumption that KNN assumes data is in metric space and there is a notion of distance. So when we'll explain what exactly KNN is and how it works, you will see that distance is a very important property or attribute for that for this algorithm. Okay, so it's assumed that the data that we'll get will have distance like it can be plotted onto a coordinate system and there is a notion of distance in between them. Okay. The second thing is each of the training data should consist of a labeled data. It, it's very simple. Basically, we need a data which also has a Y or a label. So for every row, we should have a Y value. Yes, no, dog, cat. I think you get the uh, concept. The third point is we'll also be given a single number K. This number decides how many neighbors influence the classification. And this number is usually an odd number. So again, uh, this is something that we will discuss in this video. So uh, just stay patient. So these are the three assumptions that we are going to take forward. Now, let's have a geometric intuition about the algorithm. So here on your screen, you can see a piece of data where we have got three columns. So the first column is age, which contains the age of our customers. The second column contains the salary in thousands. So if you focus on the first row, the customer has an age of 25 and he has got a salary of 20,000 rupees. Okay. Similarly for the fourth customer, the age is 42 and the salary is 100,000 or 1 lakh rupees. And the third column is the uh, target or the label data where we tell whether the customer purchased the product or not. Okay, so now let's have a geometric intuition of KNN using this piece of data. So what I have done is I have taken X axis or rather I have assumed X axis to be the age and Y axis to be the salary. And then I have plotted all those points onto this 2D coordinate system. You should also notice that the red points signify that the customer has not purchased the item and the green point signify that he has purchased the item. Okay. Now here comes the main concept. So now let's say you have some input data like this and suddenly you get a new data and currently you don't know whether the customer has purchased or not purchased the product or the item and you have to predict it on the basis of given input data. Okay. So what you do is the first step is to calculate geometric distance or in this case Euclidean distance between the given point and the uh, points that you have got already. So you will calculate the distance from the black point to all these red and green points. Okay. Now let's take a case where the value of K is equal to one 
which basically means that we have to consider only one neighbor and that neighbor is the closest neighbor. So in our case, you can clearly see that this red dot is the nearest neighbor. And what you do is you simply say or you simply decide that, okay, fine, this black or this new point is also into the category of not purchased. So I get, I think you get the idea, the gist behind this algorithm. It's very, very simple. The simple assumption in this algorithm is you are just like your neighbor. So if you say that K is equal to one, the algorithm will say it will find out the nearest point and whatever is the label on that point, it will assign the same label on the new point. Let me show you one more case. Let's have a case where K is equal to three. Now again, what you will do is you will find the distance of the current point with all the points. Then you will sort it in ascending order. And now this time you will consider the three nearest neighbors. Okay. And if you see this time, we have got two green points, which means the purchase points and one red point, which means the not purchase points. Now, according to the concept of majority count, the new point will be classified as purchased. Okay. Let's take one more case to solidify our understanding. We are taking a case where K is equal to five. Again, the same process will repeat. We'll find distance between the current point and every other point. We will sort the distance and this time we'll take the five nearest neighbors and we can easily see this time around we have got two green points and three red points. So again, by the concept of majority count, the new point will be classified as not purchased. And that's the gist of this algorithm. It's, it's as easy as you can see. Now a few points to consider. Although in this example, we are talking about a 2d example. So you can see that we have got two input columns, right? Age and salary. But there might be certain scenarios or examples where you will have tens or hundreds of columns. Even in that case, this concept will hold true. So you might not be able to plot the graph for that scenario, but trust me, you can always visualize this 2D example and work on that particular example. Okay. The second point to consider is that in this example, we have taken Euclidean distances, which is the normal distance you calculate is if you can see the formula for that is uh, just one second. Yeah, this one square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So this is the formula to calculate Euclidean distance between two points in a coordinate system. In, in fact, a 2D coordinate system. So so uh, there might be certain scenarios where you will have to use some other distances like Manhattan dis distance or Minoski distance. So again, we'll talk about these distances in a different video in a future video. Uh, and we'll also see why using these dis distances will be beneficial over using Euclidean distance. But for this video, we are just going to consider that we are going to calculate Euclidean distances. Okay. Now, now that we have a geometric intuition about the uh, algorithm, let's see it in action by seeing this demo. So I have got uh, the same data in a Google sheet where you can see I have got four, in fact, five columns, but you should focus on the first three columns right now. So the first one is age, then salary, and then purchase. And I've got data for like 22 customers. Okay. So, right. This is the data and I, I have also got the labels for them. So Y N N. So now let's say I get a new data about a new customer. So this is the data about the new customer. And now I want to find out whether this customer will purchase the product or not. Right. And let's take the example in for this example, let's assume that the value of K is three, right? So now what I will do is I'll calculate Euclidean distance between this point and every other point by using this formula. Okay. So I've already applied this formula to this, uh, row. So what I'll do is I'll simply drag it down so that it will calculate and you can see that I have got the different values for the distance, right? 
Now what I have to do is I have to technically sort this value and I have to find the three nearest neighbors, right? So again, I'm doing it uh, manually. So I guess this is the first point and this is N and I have got a 20. Let's say this is the second point and we have got one more 20. So uh, I'm sorry, this should be Y and we have got one more 20. So this is also Y. Now what the algorithm will do is it will count the majority uh, votes or count. So you can totally see that two of its nearest neighbors are Y's and one of them is N. So this new data will be labeled as Y according to the KNN algorithm. So I get, I, I think you get the idea. It's very, very simple, right? Now, a few more important points that I would like to discuss. The first one is that KNN is not suitable for low noise data. So here's a sample uh, cut out from the data and you can totally see that in three of the rows, I have got some random garbage value for the labels. And now that you understand uh, how KNN works and you've also seen a demonstration, I think you totally understand that these labels are very, very important for the working of KNN. So if you provide noisy data or incorrect data, that will totally hamper the accuracy of the algorithm, right? Second, uh, KNN is considered to be a lazy learner. By lazy learner, I mean that KNN algorithm roughly understands or learns nothing during the training stage. Why am I saying this? It's because if you see the working of KNN during the training stage, it does only one thing and that is to store all the training data because all the calculation is being done during the prediction stage, right? The distances to be calculated from every point, then sorting them and then ranking them. It, it's all done during the prediction stage. So during the training stage, the algorithm is technically learning nothing. That's why this algorithm is also known as a lazy learner. Okay. The third point is that it also works for regression. Uh, so in one video of this series, we'll also apply KNN to our regression problem. Okay. Now let's see some of the applications or real life, uh, use cases of KNN. The first is recommendation systems, uh, recommendation systems base are based on similarity of two products and KNN is a perfect candidate to be used in those scenarios. In fact, uh, if you use or rather build some recommender system, you will see that you are going to, you are using KNN. Second is document retrieval systems. So if you are trying to build a system which can fetch similar documents out of a collection of documents, you are going to use NLP, natural language processing, alongside this algorithm KNN. And these are used a lot uh, in big companies. Uh, big internet based companies. The third application is, uh, is a very niche, uh, research area in biology called gene uh, expression. So, uh, again, I'm not going to talk about this because this is not something that I totally understand. So you can totally go and do a Google search and read more about this topic. It, it seems, un uh, interesting. So finally, uh, since in the next video, we are going to work on a real world data set and we are going to apply KNN on it, we should know how to find this K. So apparently there are two methods. The first method is very, very simple where what you do is you just simply count the number of rows in the data in the training set and you just find the square root of the number. So if you have got, I don't know, 64 rows, uh, then uh, the value of K would be eight, right? Uh, again, a point should be noted that K should be odd to avoid ambiguity right? Uh, which basically means that if you have got K to be equal to, let's say four and two points are saying yes. And two points are saying no. Now this is a scenario of ambiguity and that is not good, right? So generally K is taken as odd. Okay. The second method is <laughs> it's not exactly a method. It's actually a jugaad or a lack of method where what you do is 
you simply take every value of k from 1 to 10 or 15 or 25 and then you calculate accuracy score for each of the values of k and for whatever value the accuracy va uh, score is highest you take that value to be the value of k and deploy it during the uh, deployment of the algorithm okay so uh, that was it for the video guys uh, in the next video we are going to work on a real life data set thanks